Testing, testing. Yes. Yeah, we are here. Yeah. Good evening. Good here we afternoon, are. Everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, today we're gonna cook a um, very traditional dish, basically um, fettuccine with pesto. Uh, we're gonna start with the dough, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the dough, where the dough is originated from, and how it's made, and etc. etc. Then we're gonna work with pesto, how you can make pesto, the different kind of pestos you can use, um, and the method of preparation. So take it away, Rui. So as chef said, we're going to be doing the pesto and the fettuccine. Uh, Sam, my colleague Sam is going to start uh, measuring the dough. She's going to, do, we're going to do making fresh pasta. So we're going to be making fresh pasta dough. Uh, while she does that, I'll start in the preparations for the pesto. So I'll be here uh, cutting some garlic. So you can see the pesto is basically built out of traditionally out of a gar <clears throat> out of garlic, uh, basil, and olive oil and pine nuts. Uh, we add in there a last moment. We will add in there some. Sorry, outside. We will add in there uh, some pine nuts and some olive oil. Uh, and the last thing what we add in there is um, Parmesan cheese. However, when I make this at home, I do not add the Parmesan cheese. I will leave the Parmesan at the last moment and I will add it in my pan. Because if I use my pesto and I keep it in the fridge, I can keep it easily two weeks. And if I, as soon as I put the cheese inside, cheese is a living organism. So basically that will basically is a chance that it will spoil my pesto. So we do, we do always the pesto last moment. So that's why. Uh, traditionally we do that with the mortar and pesto. We are uh, basically chopping it up very fine. He's first making a fine chiffonade out of it and press it out and then goes from there. Uh, Sam is making on this side, she's making the pasta. And uh, that is basically a very easy recipe. It's one egg and 100 gram of flour. And equivalent, then you go up. In this case, we have 500 grams and we do five eggs and slowly she will add the egg. So, so measuring it up. Um, the flour that we use, uh, semolina flour, you have the hard flour and soft flour, basically. If there's dry pasta, we tend to use semolina, hard pasta, but when it is uh, fresh pasta, basically we can use all-purpose flour. So this will have, it makes you, however, the cooking time is way different. So for dry pasta, you need sometimes seven to eight minutes, uh, maybe even a little bit more. And for fresh pasta, you're probably ending up like two to three minutes for cooking that. Um, also, we can add in the flour and um, the egg. If you want to make it uh, basically yellow and you want to make it a little bit more rich, don't use egg, just use whole only egg yolk. So instead of whole egg, we use the egg yolk. You will get a very rich pasta. Basically, this uh, derivates from basically the, the reason is that is that the fat from the egg. There is of course the most there is no uh, fat in the egg white, but there is fat in the uh, egg yolk. So it will be much richer when you use uh, egg yolk. And the color will be, of course, very nice and green. If you want to make some threads in there, there is an idea to put saffron threads, and then you get a very nice pasta when you roll it out, and you have your saffron threads in there. So that is also something that uh, gives you some color. Um, if you want like to do a green one, then we also do spinach in there. So what we do, we take a spinach, we blanch that very short. Blanching is basically a process that you dip it in hot water for about two to three seconds, take it out, and then basically we make a puree out of it, and then we use that. Um, next to this nowadays, you can also use uh, jarjir or rugula, and it gives also not only a nice color, but it also gives a little bit of spice, because the rugula is a little bit peppery, a little bit spicy, so that's how you basically can make uh, a green pasta. Uh, sometimes you see also black pasta, and black pasta is not really black. I mean, when you make the pasta, it's black, but once you start cooking it, you're ending up almost with a dark gray, and we do that with squid ink. You can buy that in the supermarket, and uh, there's almost no flavor coming from it, even if it's uh, from, a, from a squid. It doesn't uh, basically give you any taste, but it will give you a nice contrast on your plate. So sometimes they do, they do three colors, they do three kinds of uh, black, red, and um, 
white, green, and maybe also white, you know. If you do the red one, it's also uh, very easy. We do a little bit of tomato paste in there. So a little bit of tomato paste in your dough it gives you basically a red pasta. So that's how you can get and play around with the colors of your pasta, beside all the different shapes uh, what we can later do. Um, as you can see, he puts all the leaves on top of each other uh, for the basil. And then basically why? Because he wants to chop it up as fine as possible. And then we put it in the, por in the porter, uh, pestle and mortar. He's uh, cooking it. She's getting in the shape, so a little bit more. I think, I think you need more eggs a little bit. Eh? Yeah, you have three more eggs, so that's correct. Um, basically, so this is how it works. Let me show you a little bit about the history. Uh, pasta is basically uh, all too very popular legend claims Marco Polo introduced the pasta to Italy following his expo uh, exploration from the Far East. So originally, pasta that comes originally from China. Uh, that's where basically that originates from, from uh, as we know the different noodles as we do that. Um, and basically it, it goes as far back as the 4th century. So we do a lot of theory in our college. Um, these have been almost, uh, this team has all, is almost finished. They have been working almost a year uh, in the college. And what does it mean to work a year in the college? Is um, this 50% of our lessons are theory and 50% of our lessons are practical. And they're standing in the kitchen from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And sometimes later if they're not finished. And sometimes they're so enthusiastic that they don't finish or they just continue. So uh, we're cooking for, for and in general, we... Just a second. Some competition behind is happening here, unfortunately. Or fortunately for them. Um, so basically we, we cook around four dishes uh, per practical and we're repeating the, the techniques. So it's not so sincere about learning a particular dish. That's not uh, important. The importance is when we learn how to cook is basically getting master and mastering all the techniques that we're using. Cooking, poaching, grilling, uh, sauteing, sous vide. So all the techniques we basically repeat and repeat and we do that with different dishes. So that's how we do that. On one day you have theory, the theory is also uh, full days from basically from 8.30 in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon in blocks two and then basically you do the whole day theory and then after you have done the theory you still have homework. So a quick little bit of homework because we have learning activities based on the theory. So then you have to basically refer to everything what we have learned in the class. Um, you have learned in the class and then put that on paper. And that's what you raise your assessment. Yes, Louis. So Louis. right now, Chef, I've just added the basil. I've started yes. crushing it and making the pesto. And now I'm gonna add the garlic. So as the sequence goes, you add the basil first. Add a little bit of salt to help crush and reach out the oils. And then add the garlic and try and make it as fine as possible. You said already, yeah, he adds a little bit of the salt. Why? Basically, because the salt will extract the moisture and it will make it much easier to make it a paste. So that's the reason. Everything what we do in the kitchen has not only a reason, we also try to explain and to understand why we add the certain products in a certain sequence and to make sure we understand why we do that. Because these techniques you can apply to many, many other dishes. It's not about the dish that we cook, but it's all about uh, the technique that we are using. So so this is really important. So we're getting there. Oh, a little bit more, a little bit more flour. Oh, rolling boil. So that's with the pesto. Um, as I said, we have to do the theory the whole day, and then they go home and basically, and then they have to do the uh, learning activities of the theory. Next to that, on the next day, we have then a practical. But you cannot just show up for the practical. Basically, you go, you go in the system, and we discuss during the class of the theory what we're going to cook for the next day. And based on that, you have to do the preparation. So exactly, we are going to understand what we're going to cook, how we're going to cook it, what technique is we're going to use, and then they're going to make a workflow plan. So in which sequence we're going to produce our items. So everything will be done in steps and in steps. Then they will come the next day, they will come to the, to the school and we do the practical, everything what they have prepared. 
And this is also very important because everything is then documented. So every step that they prepare will be documented. So they make a mise en place, your preparation as we say, eh, and mise en place in the kitchen. And everything will be, you make a photo of it. And you make a picture of your mise en place from everything that you need. Then once all your mise en place is ready, you're going to start producing, you're going to start cooking. And then you have all the cooking techniques, you make a picture of that also, what you cook, how you cook it, and there will be pictures made of that. You do that yourself. Once that is done, then at the end you come to presentation or preparation presentation. So you make also pictures of your presentation, how you serve it in a plate, uh, in a bowl, whatever you want, and with your decoration. Once that is done, um, yes, absolutely. it works so, a little bit easier. Olive oil, of course. And we've Italy, so we try to work always with olive oil. We go through all the steps and make this thinner and thinner and thinner. Got it. As long as you can, at the end, look through it, then you have the right thickness achieved. If you want to make dry pasta, you can make also dry pasta out of this. That's very easy. Basically, you basically layer it out on a big tray and you put it in a place where it is warm and dry, low humidity. If you have high humidity, you have tried, they have a chance that you get fungus. So that's why. Um, for the people who do not use, uh, who are vegetarian or vegan and do not use eggs, you can also use water. So basically, industrial pasta, as we know that and we buy in the supermarket, is only made from water and durum wheat. Durum wheat is semolina, so let me see if I had something on it. I will come later to that. It's made from durum wheat, and it is a hard wheat. So it's a, basically, and that basically it. takes longer to cook, but there is also a benefit out of this. And it is uh, when you and uh, go and eat somewhere in a restaurant or you're going to eat on a buffet, they will also use always use dry pasta. They will never use fresh pasta. And the reason for that is, if you would make that from fresh pasta, and you leave that in your plate, or you leave that in a dish, after five to 10 minutes, there will be one lump. It will all stick together. So that is typical of fresh pasta. So dry pasta doesn't have that, and dry pasta it separates it, so is it. One more. Yeah, that looks good. So. And then when she's finished, we will roll out the pasta thin, fettuccine, and we put it on here in a flour, in a little bit of flour, so it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick together. See, now we're reaching the right thickness. Somebody won. Somebody won a prize over there. Okay, and that's it. Now we're gonna give it a little bit of dusting, and then we're gonna run it through the. Tagliatelli. Um, the difference between tagliatelli, tagliolini, spaghetti, spirelli is only the shape. There is no different pasta used, there is nothing different around. And basically, tagliatelli is what we are knowing is about the ribbon pasta. And you can see that now. There's also sometimes the machines have different uh, ribbon sizes, uh, but there is in this case there are always two sizes on there. One is the tagliatelli that comes out, you see now here, and on the back side there is a little bit of a smaller one, and that's called tagliolini. So the size of the pasta decides what dish you're going to make, and that's very right. Normally you can always say if it is like something with meat, then you use the penne. But if it is something with a sauce, like now she's going to spread out out, and she separates it a little bit, and she, she will dust it a little bit off. She dust it a little bit off. See, sometimes the machine doesn't cut it because it's really f fresh pasta, and it's a little bit, on in this case, a little bit oily. That is very good for the taste, but it doesn't cut as clean if, if you do it with water, for example. So you separate it. We maybe you can give her a hand, or you can put the yes, new. You start with this one. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, and then you let it basically dry if you want to. Yes. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, an egg. Uh, one egg. Uh, basically, an egg weighs 50 grams. So I know we have small eggs and big eggs, and I'm working in the kitchen. Uh, and she's working in the pastry, that is Sally, my colleague, she does everything with pastry and bakery. Um, there is a huge difference. I use one egg, she doesn't use one egg. She uses 50 grams of eggs. 
Because for me, an egg is an egg. For her, an egg is not an egg. Because we have small eggs and big eggs, and in the pastry, that makes a huge difference. So officially, a normal egg, a traditional egg, originally, is 50 grams. But you will find out that most eggs in the supermarket are nowadays 55, 65, even 75, and even double yolks. But the big style, the normal, what they consider the XL eggs, are 65 gram eggs. If you use it in the pastry, you're gonna have a big problem if you do that by piece. Here in the kitchen, we can get away with anything because also it depends on the flour. An egg with 100 gram of flour is no guarantee because A, it depends on the size of your egg and it, you might have to add some water in it, you might have to add some uh, flour to it. So that's why. Right. So you see here, we try to keep it a little bit separated. Oh yes. And we dry it out. This you can also prepare. So if you have guests at home, you can prepare this in the morning, put it on a dry place and use it up in the evening. So you see it stretches out very nice. It's a fantastic pasta. And we go step by step, never skip a step. All right. Any questions in between? Not yet? Let me tell you a little bit about pesto. Okay, uh, the history of pesto, um, basically it comes old from a very long time, also from the Roman age. An ancient Roman used to eat a similar paste um, and was called made from uh, garlic, salt and cheese and herbs and olive oil and vinegar, sometimes pine nuts. Uh, you do not have to use pine nuts. Pine nuts are very hard to get, that's number one. Yeah. But pine nuts are also expensive. So if you say I want to use another nut, um, they're not the cheapest, but we also make the same recipe and we use, in this case, we use pistachio nuts because it gives a really, really great taste. So pistachio nuts will also be a very good option for that. Um, don't use peanuts because they are too strong, but you can use, for example, you could use walnuts. So that's why. So uh, there is a couple of options for that. Um, Basically, it comes from northern Italy, Italy, the pesto. Oh, look at this, we're making some progress. Almost there? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna give it some cutting again, some, some shape, and there we go. A nice pasta. The people are getting uh, overweight. That doesn't come of what they eat. It comes mostly from the problem of the amount they eat. So that's really important. So we really focus separately also on the on the totally of the calorie value of the dishes. So that's really important. So he makes a, you see already, nice green sauce. Looks fantastic. Also, when you want to thicken up your sauce, so he's now adding the pasta inside, and sometimes your pasta, you want to thicken it up a little bit, you can use the pasta water to regulate the thickness of your sauce. Because the pasta water contains the starch, so that will help you then basically to regulate the thickness. And it's all original, so basically all natural products. You see over here, also what you see here in the kitchen, we tend to use cooking cream. Sometimes you have whipping cream and cooking cream. So cooking cream is always cheaper than whipping cream. Anybody knows why? Exactly, the fat content. Anybody knows the fat content from whipping cream? 35, 36%. Cooking cream? Exactly, so no, lower even lower. So basically we can go to 27, 25, and again, the lower the amount uh, of fat is at, of course, the cheaper the, the basically the cooking cream is. Um, there is a benefit uh, in this case to use cooking cream above whipped cream, because basically the, the chance that if it use whipped cream, the fat will separate during the cooking and it will shift, as we call it, the shifting of there, it will separate, but we still get the creamy flavor. So don't waste your money. Use a proper cooking cream. Um, use a proper cooking cream when you make this. Don't use whipping cream. Use that for your desserts. So that's why. There is a lot of qualities. There is a lot of brands of cooking cream and whipping cream. The taste is different. Yes, there is a huge taste. And there is also a big price difference. But once you taste it, then you quickly find out, yes, there is a difference. So I would advise you, if you buy that, take one and another one. And next time you buy another brand again, and then remember how it tastes. Because there is a huge difference to it. Okay. They're gonna taste it up now. 
Um, always make sure before you do it, salt and pepper. And then the last thing we have basically here. Uh, okay, and if you want, basically, uh, we can put some lemon zest or some orange zest or lime zest over the top. So that will be really, really, uh, that would be really nice. When you're preparing your dishes, you want to have always a combination, not only of flavor, but we're also looking for a combination of taste and a combination of texture. And what I mean a combination of texture is that he puts, of course, a very soft pasta inside, very creamy, but when we serve it, we put inside, we put a cheese cracker, which is basically nothing more than Parmesan, grated in the oven, and then make a cracker out of it. And then you put that on top of it, because again, then you have this salty, crunchy experience over there. So, now he's tasting to make sure that it is the right taste. Good chef. Ready to go? Yes, chef. Okay, get a tongue and serve it. Let's get it out and let's see if we can serve some guests. And you see already, eh? he is cooking one dish and Sam is already working on the second one. This is how it works in the kitchen. You have to be very, very methodical and in a sequence how to prepare you to get the next one ready. So that's why. And hopefully he will have all his pasta out before she's ready. And otherwise she has to use the bowl. Uh, Khadija, can you give the bowl from behind her so she can use that? If you want to save your pasta and it is hot, use a little bit of olive oil. So have your bottle of olive oil ready and then basically put your uh, scoop out your pasta from your hot water, drizzle it directly with hot olive oil, uh, with olive oil, and while it's hot, toss it around and then it will not stick. So that's why. So yeah, let me show it around. I will leave this here for the for the photo. Um, it's how we basically serve, would serve that for a guest in a, in a restaurant. But in this case, I will have for everybody, hopefully, also something to taste. So that's a little bit how it works. So right now, Chef, we're just plating. Yeah. When we plate, yeah, we always need gloves. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. So as you can see here, so this would be then the dish as it is served in the restaurant. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of how we do that. And then you have the crunchy cheese on the top and then your creamy pesto nicely underneath. So that's why. Um, your portion size, and again, eh, make sure your portion size is in line. We always like to eat more, but I always say, the, the amount of food that you should eat is when you finish, you say, hmm, I would have liked something extra. So it should have been a little bit extra. So this is really important that you do not over it. It's very heavy, and basically it comes later on how heavy it is. So that's why. This one we can use on the uh, gift to uh, Sam, to put on the uh, thing. And that's yes. why. And put some cheese over it also. So we have some fresh cheese on there, we have some crispy cheese on there, and we put some cheese inside. So completely soft cheese, melted cheese, as well as uh, crispy cheese. So three kinds of things over there. Very, very healthy. You will see always people who are vegan or vegetarian eat a lot of nuts because to, uh, to get the 13 amino acids, to get your body complete, then it really is important that you that you get a, a well-balanced diet. And nuts are very, very healthy. Uh, another myth about nuts, now you mentioned that, uh, nuts are, uh, of course, fat. But that is a, a, this is a, a proper kind of fat. So, yeah, to eat peanuts, yes, it's fat, but it's a very healthy kind of fat. So the, the fat that you find in nuts is the same as uh, is very healthy fats. So that's why. So hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, you can ask me, but you can ask also uh, the chefs, because like I said, it's not the first time they cooked it. Every dish that we cook here, they have cooked several times. But it doesn't mean they have cooked this dish three or four times. This dish they have cooked one time. But they have cooked another pasta dish. And they use the same technique with another one. So that's very important. We learn to use the same techniques, but with different dishes. Any questions? Tastes good? Very. You have the aroma, eh? It's when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, I said already, it goes directly to your nose. It's just, like I said, it's very nice. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tomorrow uh, we have another show in the afternoon. I think we have late. Uh, Sally is going to cook. She's doing pastry and bakery, things that I know absolutely nothing about. I'm going to sit there and enjoy it and eat it. Uh, because pastry and bakery and the rest of the kitchen is completely separate always. I would like to thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you can make it at home. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.